effort to write Churchillian. It had been on every draft of every speech from the beginning. Clifford called me just before we met on that Saturday and said, you know, that peroration doesn't belong there anymore. The speech has changed. You can't make the kind of speech we've now got and then end it with the sort of we will fight them in the uh, lanes and the villages and the beaches language that, that is in that peroration. So I just cut it off. I didn't have time to write a new one. Johnson asked me, where was it? I like that. And I said, uh, well, I didn't like it. It doesn't really fit with the speech. I'll go upstairs and write a new one. And I'll make it short because the speech is already a very long one. He said, you don't need to worry about time. I may have a little ending of my own. And he walked out of the room, leaving me and Clifford. I turned around to Clifford and said, good Lord, is he going to say sayonara? Is he going to quit? And Clifford looked at me as if I were an, uh, out of my mind. We'd all assumed, of course, that he would run. He loved the job. He reveled in it. About five in the afternoon, I got back to my office, and Johnson called me and asked me what I thought about the speech that he was about to deliver in two or three hours. And I said I thought it was pretty good. I was really proud and glad that we had turn, turn, changed the speech. He said, I've got an ending. I said, I've heard that. He said, do you know what's in it? I said, I think so. And he said, what do you think about it? I said, uh, I'm very sorry, Mr. President. And he said, OK, so long, partner. With American sons in the field far away, with America's future under challenge right here at home, with our hopes and the world's hopes for peace and the balance every day, I do not believe that I should devote an hour or a day of my time to any personal partisan causes or to any duties other than the awesome duties of this office, the presidency of your country. Accordingly, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. As promptly as possible after he spoke, I had a press conference and announced formally that the 206,000 troops were not to be sent. This is part and parcel, I believe, of the president's decision to place a limitation at this time upon our troop level at a point not exceeding 550,000. It seemed appropriate that, that uh, it should be said, if that's what he meant, and I assumed that that was what he meant from the tone of his speech on March the 31st. There were still those who very much wanted to. The military still thought the matter was hanging fire. That ended it. After that statement was made publicly, there was no further comment about the 206,000 troops. The Tet Offensive had a further impact. In mid-May, North Vietnamese diplomats arrived in Paris to talk for the first time. That week, the Viet Cong launched a new offensive. Americans fought on for the same objective, an independent South Vietnam. But after Tet, the strategy changed. There were peace talks and the slow withdrawal of American troops. The talking and fighting went on for the next five years.
American Experience is made possible by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation to enhance public understanding of the role of technology. The foundation also seeks to portray the lives of the men and women engaged in science.